lot's been said this year of furniture row, win a championship, and then see you later. We're out of here the, the next year because of, of finances and stuff. But that's kind of what Rod did, Osterlin. You know, they won the Rookie of the Year, they won a championship, and then he sells out to J.D. Stacy, a little-known name from history that was on a million different race cars. You worked with Earnhardt. And then he and quit. Then he, yeah. And w when you worked with Ern Earnhardt, what was he like? That was the early part of his career. What was he like as a as he a driver? Was, um, <laughs> he couldn't control himself. Yeah. Darrell Walter intimidated him so bad it was unreal that he would. You know, the bad thing on my resume, I never won a race with Earnhardt. Run yeah. second a couple or three times. You know, but he only stayed with him about six months. You yeah. know, when Stacy bought the team, he wasn't satisfied with the upper management and everything, and then he went with Childers. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then we got, uh, who did we get first, Tim Richmond or? Ru I think Rutman. he got Rutman. Rutman. I think he got Rutman, Rutman first. And he, was, and he was a great driver and yeah. everything. We just never could win a race yeah. with him. And uh, that, was, that was Joe. You know, Joe could get right there yeah. but never cross that line. Yeah. I mean, run some great well, races. Well, he, he, he filled in for some when Richard was yeah. hurt later yeah. on. And then we got Tim Richmond, you know, and what a natural he was, you yeah. know, as far as. Didn't know nothing about a race car, absolutely. Yeah. And I said, well, well, me and Richard done it this way. Well, let's do it that way. That was, you know, and that, that's the way he drove the race car. You know, won two races with him at Riverside, but yeah. just a natural. And left the pits at Michigan, broke both axles. <laughs> Tim broke both axles? Both axles. Both. Got one of them fixed and it still wouldn't go. Well, then broke. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Never heard of that before. I but neither. But Earnhardt respected him a lot, you yeah. know, because he, he come in and raced Earnhardt. Yeah. yeah. Hard, and Earnhardt didn't like it yeah. at that point. Side by side on the outside, number 25, Richmond. On the inside, it is Earnhardt. Back to go to turn number one. Let's see who's going to give here. Somebody will have to. Still side by side, Richmond takes first. But, you know, I really don't know what happened to him. I never, I wasn't a my, nightlife person yeah, yeah. and everything, but he showed up and raced a race car. Yeah. And here's a pass again. This is live now. I'm going to ask both of y'all this. After being together for so long, what was it like the first time you rolled in the victory lane with another driver? It was a long time coming for me, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. and, and I guess Tim Richmond was the first one, yeah. and then, because I didn't win with Earnhardt, and I didn't win, got close with Rut, uh, Joe Rutman, and yeah. uh, it... Uh, Did it even cross your mind? No, not really. I yeah. think no, we never lost our friendship. I mean, yeah. it wasn't one and of them. I, I do things. realize that. I, yeah. I do understand yeah. that. And uh, let's be clear about that. It was strictly yeah. a business decision. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, just not long ago, one of the boys in the shop asked me, says, uh, where were you at when Richard won his 200th race? Where were you at in the picture? I said, oh, I was kind of off winning my eighth championship. You know, so that kind of <laughs> shut him up. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good line. That's a good line. That's, that's but a good that line. shut him up, too. But, yeah. they, you know, they're always trying to get something on me because I'm the old one in the crowd, you know. But I'm a pretty smart mouth, too. You yeah. know that. Yeah. But with Buddy and those guys winning, winning those two races, Dover was a big win. Dover was a big win. Do Dover was big because it had been a while. It had been a while since we won one. But then everything was the next race, the next race, the next race, before we won day went to Daytona. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So but everybody was expecting a two hundred any time. Yeah. We was too, but it couldn't have been better for us to win the two hundredth race, July the fourth, for the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. Coming to the trial down to the line, it's Richard Petty by a foot. If you'd have wrote a script, nobody would have bought yeah. it. You know? Mr. President, it's great to have you here. This occasion, Richard Petty winning his 200th, it's quite a day, isn't it? Well, it certainly is. I understand that no one in the whole history of racing has ever done that or ever uh, won 200 races. So, McCaskill's down by the junkyard. Okay. And the black marks that are on the asphalt right there before you get to the corner. Yeah, that's coming down the hill before yeah. that. <laughs> so, tell me about you and him racing up through there and, and, and what happened. Well, I was out driving him, but we'll tell what happened. So okay. we, left, we left Randleman probably, what, midnight? Yeah, By something like that. The soda shop closed, yeah. so we go home. And so <laughs> I'm in a 49 Oldsmobile, and he had the family car, 52 Chrysler Saratoga. Had we, been a race car. <laughs> we, go, we go down through the bridge, and I'm still running in front of him, come on up the road there, and it's night. He turns his lights out. He's running by my lights. So you're coming up the highway, 
racing, yeah. Yeah. he's got the lights out. Yeah, well, I'm but right he, behind him, so yeah. Don't but play. as you pop over the hill, if you're side by side, you can tell if anybody's coming. Both turn your lights out. I can see his grill in my tail lights, and I know he's right on me. So we top over the hill, and there's a guy in a pickup truck going to turn left, stop. About, about halfway down the hill. Because there's two cars coming. He stops to let them go by. Well, I get on the brakes, and I hear him squalling tires. I said, well, he's going to hit me. So I get back in the gas, go around the truck, run them two cars off the road. <laughs> get straight. This is on a two-lane road. Yep. Yes. Two-lane road. Yeah. 220. And, and I'm so shook up. I can't find him. So I, I don't look in the mirror. I turn around and look for him. He ain't there. So I go down and turn around and go back. And he's sitting. He done spun about three times backed up in the road. And backed up in the driveway. Same driveway where that cat was going. And uh, <laughs> the people that I run off the road said, want to know if I'd hit him. And Spunny, he said, no, he didn't. He said, we finally get the car started, head back up the road, not even running fast, just still. Yeah. <laughs> down there at McCaskill Curve, two cars come down the road racing around the curve. He spins out again. Side by side. They were side by side. <laughs> through the corner. Coming through, through the coming corner. Coming around the corner. There. He spins out again. <laughs> I hit them bricks. <laughs> so I pull up beside him. He rolls the window down. He said, golly, we got to get this thing home or something. And the next day, we go to Hickory with that car, towing it. All right, so here's, because this is where I want to get to. Y'all grew up together. You know as much about him as anybody on the face of the earth and vice versa. Okay. The success you had on the racetrack, both of you together, very few combinations ever come along that have that type of success. You guys went apart and both had success. You won another championship, you won a couple of races and, and got the 200. Jimmy and Chad have been together since the very beginning. Do you see any similarities to what you guys have gone through? See, I think the, the deal we had was professional and personal. I don't know that they have both of those near as close as what we have. We grew up together. We played in the same sand pile when we was two years old. And racing just happened to bring us together when we got old enough. I, I don't see them being professional. They were probably as close or closer than what we were. Have you ever looked back on that and said, I regret we chose to go different ways. It was probably one of the best things that ever happened to both of us because once we got away from much of each other, we realized how we depended on each other. Yeah. You've won eight championships okay. as a crew chief. You've won 200 races as a driver. He said he'd won 400 at, without me. Yeah. <laughs> probably could have. <laughs> but, but, I can't prove him wrong. Go ahead. But there's so many records that you guys share together that nobody's going to touch. And that rarefied air. Where do you put five in a row? It, it, it's up there close from my standpoint. I, I say this, I don't think Jimmy's ever got the credit that he deserved as doing a driver right. for winning seven championships. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Chad's got a little bit more, no disrespect to Chad or nothing, yeah. he's got a little bit more credit, but I, I never thought Jimmy got as much as he deserved. His personality didn't push it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or some other personalities push push what they done. I pushed mine. I think Earnhardt pushed his. Yeah. Jimmy just said, it's there, and just let it be. Read the record, and that's what I am. Yeah, right. yeah. Jimmy's going with a new guy. Chad's going with a really young driver. Yeah. Do you think either one of them would win another championship? <laughs> I would think that uh, Chad had the best chance. Chad's going to stay around racing, I think, longer than Jimmy. So if he don't work out with this driver, Mr. Hendricks will get him another driver. Yeah. No disrespect to Jimmy. No, yeah. It's no, just, no, just it's saying, caught up with Jimmy I'm and thinking, caught up with I'm Chad. I'm talking about yeah. time. Yeah. You know, I listen to Chad on the radio, and he just tells Jimmy, Jimmy, this is what you're going to do. And Jimmy says, yes, sir. And he delivers. And, and, and Jimmy delivers. Jimmy gets up on that wheel, and he delivers. But there's other people coming along now that's made that more difficult to do. <laughs> that's my question. That's my question. That's some of it. Yeah. That is, that is my yeah. question. You, you're talking about you're talking about Richard, Kale, Pearson, Bobby, Glossback, and all that group. And then I guess the next one to come in was Daryl. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Stepped on some people's toes, talked a lot. Jackie, I don't have to tell you. You've raced a long time. I don't have to tell a lot of these people. But cheating is a way of life in NASCAR Grand National Racing. Kale gave him a good name, Jaws. Yeah. Joe, how does it feel to be the biggest <laughs> cheater here today? <laughs> <laughs> and then along come Earnhardt. And then Jeff. then Jeff come along and got under Earnhardt's skin. <laughs> and 
It's a never-ending yeah. cycle. Yeah. All right. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Thanks. Okay, buddy. Thank you, man. I'd like to recognize a man who never, never let up on his efforts to win his eighth championship. Dale Earnhardt is a true competitor and a great champion. And at this time, I would like to offer a toast to the man. Dale, great effort, man. There's some milk. Thank you. Hey, NASCAR fans. Thanks for checking out the NBC Sports YouTube channel. Make sure you hit subscribe below for the latest NASCAR news, race highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.